What up everybody? Back again with our time unit. Today we're focused on finding the end time within the hour. So let's wake up and get to work. So your objective today, today I will be able to find the end time when given the start time and the lapse time within the hour. Okay, right? So we're not crossing over hours. All of our work today is going to be done within the same hour. So let's go take a look at our math vocabulary. So you need to know three different phrases that we're going to be using uh, for this lesson and our next few lessons. The first one is start time, right? That one's pretty self-explanatory. It's a time that an event starts. An event could be anything. It could be a game. It could be a walk. It could be getting ready for school. It could be baking something, right? But it's whenever that event starts. Our elapsed time is the amount of time that has passed from the start of an event to the end of an event. We'll come back and visit that. And then our end time is the time that the event ends, okay? So obviously anything you do has a start time and end time. Even if you don't label it that, it still does, right? You start doing something, then time flows, and then you end it, right? And the elapsed time is the amount of time that has passed while doing that event from the start of something to the end of something. Let's take a look at a story to kind of help us visualize these three vocabulary words in action. All right, so here we have a timeline, okay? And so we view a timeline uh, as a number line in math because time flows like a river, right? Time is never ending. It just continues to move kind of like our number. So when we look at elapsed time questions, we view time being on a number line, okay? So this is what we're going to be using this number line here for to label our start and end in elapsed time to help us see what really happened and the amount of time it took for something to happen. Let's take a look at this story to kind of help us use this timeline and visualize our math vocabulary words. All right, so you are making something for dinner. So you begin making that at 7 p.m. Here you have a picture, right? You got all your mixing bowls out and you're mixing and whisking and doing a lot of stuff, right? So this is going to be our start time. This is when we are starting to do the activity, right? We're starting to make dinner. And then we did some things, right? We started at seven, but then it took 15 minutes to mix everything together. It took another five minutes to get all of those ingredients that we mixed together on the baking pan in the dish to be able uh, to put into the oven. And then it took 30 minutes for our dinner to bake in the oven. Okay, so this is the time it took to do all the different things. Now, if you notice right here on our timeline help, right, we use hills to represent minutes. Okay, so hills could be 15 minutes, it could be five minutes, it could be 30 minutes, right? But we kind of label those as hills. I call this the mountain and hills strategy. And then the mountains that you see there are going to equal an hour. Now we're not going to use those today because again, we're just going to be within an hour, but I wanted to show it to you because as you progress in your skills, you'll begin to use the mountains in these questions as well. So the hills are cool because they can be any minute. It could be one minute, it could be two minutes, it could be 20 minutes, or in this case, we could have a 15 minute hill, a five minute hill, and a 30 minute hill, okay? So this is the amount of time that passed, and then at the end of this 30 minutes, our oven is going to ding, and we're going to take our dinner out of the oven. The total of all of those minutes together is 50 minutes, right? So from the time we started to make dinner to the time it's going to come out of the oven, that's 50 minutes. We call that our elapsed time. You could have done three different things in those 50 minutes like we did, or it could just be one 50-minute block. It doesn't matter. It's the time in between the start time and the end time. Now that obviously brings us to 7.50 p.m., okay? And this is when our oven dings. And we would call this the end time because this is when we are getting our dinner out of the oven. So now we kind of have this visual of understanding our three math vocabulary words. We have our start time, our elapsed time, and our end time. 
Let's take a look at three different levels of questions that you might see using these three math vocabulary words. Level one. Level one is pr the easiest type of question. They're going to give you the time in a digital, on a digital clock, okay, which means they're just going to give you the numbers, right? 435, okay? And the way this, these elapsed time problems work, you always have three parts, right? Our math vocabulary. You have the start, the end, and the elapsed. They're always going to give you two out of the three. So today they're going to give you the start time and the elapsed time, and you're trying to find the end time. Next lesson, they're going to give you the start time and the end time, and you try to find the elapsed time. And then our third lesson with this, they're going to give you the elapsed time and the end time, and you try to find the start time. The awesome thing is you use the same strategy for all of them. You need a number line for all of these types of questions. So for this one, they gave us the start time. So we're going to label that, all right? They gave us our elapsed time. Now it's our job to use our hills and break this up into easy to add math, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to take out 20 from this first, and I'm gonna use a 20 minute hill because I know that it's pretty easy just to add a two in the tens place to the three. And that's going to be 20 minutes, okay? And so you can just label with a 20 and then an M. And that's going to bring me to 455, okay? Now, the important thing is I'm taking away my elapsed time that I have left as I do this, okay? So as I took 20 minutes and put in my timeline, I subtracted it because now I only have three minutes left that I need to put in my timeline. You could do three one-minute hills or you could just do one three-minute hills. It depends on your level and how comfortable you feel with adding. I feel pretty comfortable with adding. So I'm going to use a three minute timeline. I'm just going to put a three here. Okay. Cause I can't fit an M in there too. And that's okay. And so if I had 55 plus three, that's going to take me to 58. So now I know that it is 458 when I ended. So my end time is 458 PM. So that's how we use our timeline with our hills, okay? And again, we're not doing mountains yet. We'll get there, okay? With our hills and then keeping track of our elapsed time, making sure that you're subtracting it as you go. Let's take a look at level two. For level two, they're going to give you the start time and the elapsed time again, but they're going to give it to you in an analog clock format. They're going to ask you to read the clock and then use the timeline to help you find the end time. They still gave you the start time and the elapsed time. They just made the start time look a little bit different. They're taking it back to our first lesson where we reviewed and learned how to read this clock. We still need a timeline, but the first thing I would do is I would take my clock and I would write down the time somewhere on the side or underneath so that way I can clearly see what time it is. So my hour hand is pointing a little at the 10, but my minute hand isn't at 12. It's a little bit past 12, right? My hours are going to be 10, right? We talked about this uh, last lesson. And then I know that each of these is split into five minutes, right? So five, 10. And when I look closely, I see that it's pointing directly at the two, which is going to be five, 10 minutes. So my start time is 10, 10. So now that I've done that step, that's the only difference. Now this is just a level one question, right? So I'm going to label this on my timeline with 10, 10. Okay. Oops. There we go. 10, 10. And then I'm also going to, because they gave me different pieces of elapsed time, I'm going to add these up total first, and that's going to be 23 minutes. Okay. So I did something for 14 minutes, something for nine, but that was 23 minutes of elapsed time total just like our last question. And now I'm, so I'm gonna use a 20 minute hill first. Okay, there we go. Here's my 20 minute hill. And that's gonna bring me to 1030. Again, you could do a, a 10 minute hill. You could do 23 one minute hills if you wanted to. You can break apart the minutes. Oops, sorry, that's 20. You can break apart the minutes any way that you want. Any way that you feel comfortable adding, you can do that. Okay, but I like to try to do it in the least amount of steps possible, but using friendly numbers like 10, 20, 5, 30, things that are easy to add as time. So now I have three minutes left. So I'm going to go another three minutes. Okay. And then that brought me here. And again, I kind of wrote big. The hardest part about this is being neat. So I need to kind of write over here, but that would bring me to 10, 
33, which means whatever I was started doing, whatever event that was, I ended it at 10:33, and I had zero minutes left. Okay. Now, if you need more room because you have a lot of elapsed time, we're going to take a look at that for level three. We can always do the timeline on another piece of paper. This, I just wanted everything on the same screen for you to be able to see it. Let's take a look at level three. So level three is going to be where they get into word problems. All right. And these are not very hard at all. If, you've, if you're a big fan of Instructed Beats, you've done a couple lessons with us, you know we love our sides check strategy. And so we're going to use that to solve this question. If you haven't seen it, please check out our sides check song or any of our other lessons. You'll see it. This is a great word problem strategy, right? So the, the S stands for statement. So my question said, what time did they get home? My statement's going to say, they got home at blank. Which means I'm looking for anything about when they got home. And th I know this is a time because I read the problem first, right? So I'm looking for anything about time and home. So Tracy's soccer game ended at 437, okay? That's important because that was about time. It took them 21 minutes. Oops, need an S there. Not an English teacher to get home. What time did they get home? So I know this is an elapsed time problem. So the first thing I want to do after I identify is I want to develop my plan. I want to label my start, my elapsed, and you can just put ELP if you want, right? And my end. Here is how they tried to trick you though. They told you the soccer game ended at 437. So if you're not reading carefully, if you don't develop your plan, if you don't have a word problem strategy to help you kind of visualize what's happening, you would put 437 for the end time because it told you the word end. And that's completely understandable. But if you have a word promise strategy, as you get better at these types of questions, as you start looking, the event for this was trying to get home, right? That's the event we're trying to find our time for. It took 21 minutes to get home. That means the event that we're trying to find the start and end time to is not the soccer game, it's getting home. So the soccer game ended at 437, and then they went home, right? It took them 21 minutes to get home. So even though it said the word ended here, that's because they're trying to get people to be keyword grabbers, just circling keywords instead of actually having a strategy to help you understand and solve the question. So 437 for this question is actually our start time because that's the time that they started to go home. And again, our elapsed time, our event that we were talking about was getting home, not the soccer game. So hopefully you kind of understand that. If not, go back and listen to it again. And if not, go back and listen to it again. And if not, I don't know. I don't know how to help you, all right? So our elapsed time was 21 minutes. That one's always easy. The elapsed time is always the easy one to find because it's always in hours and minutes. And the start time is always looking like a time, right? And then we want to know what time they got home. We're looking for the end time. So let me give myself some uh, a little bit more room. And again, you might have to do another piece of paper now. I'm going to do my best to draw this timeline straight. Eh, not bad. It's kind of hard to draw on, on this pad that I'm using, okay? And now all I want to do is I want to label my timeline. I know I started at 437 because now this is just a level one question, right? I took it from a level three question, the words, and by developing my plan, I've now made it a level one question, just a simple elapsed time question. So again, I'm gonna use uh, my hills, my hills, hills and mountains strategy. So I'm gonna do 20 minutes first, okay? I'm gonna label this as a 20, and I'm gonna take away 20 from my elapsed time, which means I only have one minute left, okay? And if I took 20 and added that to 37, that's going to bring me to 457, and then I need to go one more minute, label that as a one, which is going to bring me to 458. So I know that Tracy got home at 458, and I want to take away this minute so I know I'm done, okay? And again, if we go back to this, you could have done, if you don't feel com comfortable counting by 20s, you could have split this into 10 minutes hill, 10 minute hill, and then a one minute hill or you could have gone by fives, okay? It's whatever you feel comfortable with, which is why I love this Hills and Mountains strategy. You can take it and make it your own. As long as you're developing your plan and keeping track like you're supposed to, you can use however many in, uh, minute intervals is the keyword, right? 
that you would like. So for this time, let's go back. We did our equation. We solved it. Let's go back and check it. They got home at 458. Now, a quick way to check this. This isn't going to make sure you got your answer right, but it's going to make sure that your answer makes sense. Your start time should be earlier than your end time. Thank you so much for checking out our lesson on finding the end time within the hour. We hope you'll stick with us and check out our next lessons on our playlist. Check out our lapse time song. It is awesome. We really, really appreciate you spending your time with us. Hopefully you can take this hills and mountain strategies and make it your own. As always, please like and subscribe if you have not done that yet. Check out our other songs and playlists. We've loved having you with us. Thank you for spending your time with Instructed Beats today. Instructed Beats. Out.